All right, so those two gentlemen join us this morning to shed light on what transpired or what is going on within their party. Ismail Ahmed is a former national youth leader and a member of the Board of Trustees of the APC. We also do have Naira Isel Nili, who is a former Deputy Director of Communication and Strategy for the APC and the former National Publicity Secretary of the same party. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yes, it came to a head in the manner of speaking yesterday after so much speculation about what was going to happen to the position of the national chairman. Even though there are several reasons behind the scene as to why himself, the secretary, what happened yesterday occurred, but perhaps you could just give us a background. Why did this happen? What happened? What's the reason? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let him go first. <laughs> okay, I'll let him go, go first. <laughs> uh, well, um, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it's a political party. And in any association, there will be need at any point in time to do what you consider the best for the environment. The environment that we have now in terms of political and governance environment with new president in place, you have to ensure that the party that is the engine to drive governance along with the executive is, is in tune with the, the, the way the government wants to go. And I think it is just a part of preparing the ground um, the president said that we hit the ground running, and all other systems must also comply with that um, situation. So I think the good thing that has happened here is the structure is being, um, you know, taken care of in a way that is not creating any crisis. Um, so this is actually a resolution of crisis, not a crisis in itself. So what was the crisis? Yeah, the crisis had to to do with um, the fact that you had a political party um, that has not provided the kind of leadership that can, that tallies with what the reality that we have now in terms of how uh, the government wants to uh, move on. Um, you can't drive a train wagon with a Toyota engine, you know, so I think that is just the reality here. Yeah. So what is it that he was expected to do that he didn't do? It's not about what he was expected to do that he didn't do. It's about the party at any point in time has, you know, may have a reason to say, let's rejig our system. Let's get things sorted out this way. And um, I also know that um, negotiation anywhere in the world is one of the basic instruments of association. So um, political party, part of the instruments you use to resolve conflict, because Party is about interest, agenda setting, and conversing. So could it be simply put, he didn't have the interest, or the, the president didn't think he had his own interest no, no, I, I, I didn't, covered? I have not mentioned the president. This pres no, president I'm is not I'm involved. He's not a member of NWC. He's the leader of the party now, isn't he? Yeah, he is, but he's not a member of NWC. Does he have to what be a member? What we saw, yeah, he had to be. To, to be, to he, had to be to, to... he had to be to participate in the decision to say, I'm resigning or I'm, I'm not resigning. And I think this are done voluntarily by these two people. And we should commend them for, you know, taking this action in a way that now has brought peace and stability to the party. And then you can now, the government can focus on the most important thing, that is delivering on the mandate. Is this what you had expected in terms of this change? Uh, what do you mean, what I'm expecting? Was it what you had expected? Yes, I, I think I think to be honest, I think I was here on 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 Channel TV. I think about eleven months ago, and and I said that's way before the election, the general elections after the primaries. And I said I had expected the national chairman to resign. Honestly, um, you know, uh, Ogalari, they are the older <laughs> <laughs> older people, so I'm sure their their tone is a bit more conciliatory. Uh, uh, I, I believe that he never should have stayed a day longer after the, after the primaries. I think um, uh, I'm glad that he voluntarily resigned, and I'm glad that the, the, you know, the national secretary also voluntarily resigned. Uh, and I think any other person that had a hand or has a hand in uh, whatever it is that has uh, transpired should also uh, toe that path in, in that regard. I expected the Chairman to resign sooner. I'm glad that he finally did. I think the party requires leadership. The president yearns for it. 
the members of the party yearn for it. Um, um, and, and I think this is, uh, like you said, it's a resolution uh, that we all welcome. Uh, it's something that we're looking forward to. But most importantly, going forward, we expect the political party now to be an actual political party, not just a vehicle for running for elections. Because we have, personally, I will tell you this, uh, you know, after the, um, the convention that threw up some of these leaders of the party, uh, you know, there were a lot of mem party, party members that said, hey, we don't, we don't recognize these people. You know, where were they five years ago? Where were they six years ago? Where were they in 2015? You know, because what party members were actually looking for were people who understood the philosophy and the principle of the progressive mantra and the progressive movement. Uh, they didn't see that at the top echelon of the party. But of course, they are experienced people. They have been around for quite a while. Uh, so, you know, we give them all the support we could. Uh, but, you know, things have come to a head. We have a new uh, president who wants to move in a certain direction. We have members of the party who are energized, who are, you know, mobilized within themselves that they want to see their party move in a certain direction. And I'm glad the president and the, the chairman and the secretary voluntarily stepped out of that. It's an interesting thing. Uh, you've said that, you know, as far back as 11 months ago, you had already called for the resignation of the uh, national chairman of the party. And some people say that, you know, uh, the very fact that he uh, announced a different choice uh, than the person, other than the person who eventually emerged as the flag bearer of the APC, already put him, um, already put his position in trouble. Uh, I do not know if that's the incident you were referring to, um, because some people will say, oh, it was a slippery slope from then on when um, Ahmed Lawan was announced as the party's preferred candidate for the uh, presidential slot of the All Progressives Congress. Is that when his troubles began, or it began way before that time? I don't know about troubles. I don't know the trouble with who you're talking about. But I would, the, the kind of party chairman that I was looking for, you know, heading to that convention, was a party chairman that had tact, wisdom, humility, because a political party is uh, an elite organization. It's not an aluta organization. It's not a command and control because you're dealing with a lot of people who are elected, who have the mandate of the people. You know, uh, yes, the political party is the vehicle where you do that. Uh, but I think it was, um, of course, I even with my with my with my few years in politics and my few years in life in general, I wouldn't be head an organization where I'm supposed to be an umpire to decide between certain contestants freely and then make a choice or even announce a choice, you know, of a particular candidate before we get into the field. I wouldn't do that, you know. So I don't know about troubles, whether that's where his uh, trouble began. I don't know if there was any trouble that began somewhere or anything. All I'm saying is that there were a lot of people, even before that announcement, that were saying that, like, oh, wait a minute. You know, where were these people yes, in 2015 I mean, and 2014? If, if it was like 11 months ago, shortly after the... I parties. told you I have had issues with the fact that I thought that a lot of things were not handled. It was not just basically about the presidential primaries. Okay. It was a lot of other things. So if from that, that time, believe. if from that time, you know, people were, people like yourself were already calling for his resignation, wasn't that trouble already? No. For, first of all, like, for example, I think the excuse I gave before mm -hmm. I came was the fact that we had a president and vice presidential candidate at that time mm -hmm. that were both Muslims. And I thought that the national chairman, as the leader of the party, and I remember that, that interview was with you, should have excused himself for a Christian North Central candidate to emerge. That was my thought as at that time 11 months ago. I remember that. I remember that was exactly what I told you. I said that was part of my reasons. And then there were so many other reasons so many other people have. What I'm saying is that all that now has come to pass the chairman has resigned voluntarily. I think it's an honorable path for him to take. The national secretary have resigned voluntarily. I think it's an honorable path. The party now has an incredible, incredible opportunity, incredible opportunity for reform. Well, some tell us that the national uh, secretary was actually, I think they said it was around yesterday to see what was going on, if the fillers were in his favor. And previously, he had denied that any such allegation or any such thoughts as to them resigning or there was fire and the mountain in the party was all a farce. And so he got in so the environment, he had to just uh, beat a retreat and that they did not voluntarily resign. They were pushed. I don't know about that. I'm not a member of NWC. All I know is that they resigned and they are not, they are not denying that. So as far as I'm concerned, it's voluntary.
But Mr. Nino, there's talk about uh, whether or not the laws uh, accommodate this in your party in terms of the provisions and that, well, no clear provisions in terms of resignation. And so will people raise concerns about all of those things moving forward? What, what, what are you talking about the law? What, what exactly? Are there provisions that accommodate because, I mean... Resignation. Resignation for... Even the law of officers. nature accommodates resignation. It's an inalienable right of an individual to decide, I'm, I'm done. I want to go. Anywhere you are including political party. Including are there specific provisions that are accommodated that in your constitution? I, I, I don't know. I don't have the constitution here, and I don't have everything offhand. But I can tell you, you don't need that in the constitution to say, I'm done. There is nowhere in the world they force you to remain on a position you say, I'm not. Yeah, uh, I, I think the question is, what should happen? I mean, anyone can decide to do uh, whatever it is that they do. Exactly. But the thing is, what should happen? What does your party say? should happen in the event that this happens? Nothing needs to happen when you decide to resign. Resignation is resignation. All you need to do is to put in a letter. Uh, there could be negotiation, you know, uh, if they really want you to stay, um, or even if they wanted you to go. Uh, it's part of con conflict resolution. Uh, it's an instrument for conflict resolution to say uh, we think for the interest of the party and the government and the country, um, we need a new person. You know, on the saddle. You, so you could, you could, you could negotiate that. You heard Mr. Moise Banere yesterday. I don't know if you. Well, I, I don't know. I'm assuming that you heard him, but he says there are no express provisions within your party's constitution. Yeah, and I'm saying to, nobody needs express provision to decide to to decide. No matter what precipitated that, okay. you don't need express provision in the party. You cannot deny a man his right to say, "I am done. I want to go." Yes, but the thing is, what should happen in the event that that happens? I mean, yeah, what should oh. happen is actually in our constitution. Okay. Um, when the chairman is no longer um, on seat, uh, for what, by whatever reason, uh, is no longer there, the law says that the deputy national chairman from his region, we Which have two north. deputy, yeah, we have two deputy national chairmen. We have for south, we have for north. So you have a chairman from the north. The deputy national chairman from the north actually is the deputy national chairman one. So it takes over in acting capacity when the chairman vacates his seat. That is what our constitution expressly you know, states. states. Okay, so I'm a, a little, uh, you haven't quite weighed in on the controversy. You were part of an NWC too that also suffered a bit of controversy. Uh, did you see already the banana peels um, in line in wait for this particular NWC, particularly the chairman and the national secretary? Yeah, we will see. The signs have always been there. Um, just like um, Ismail said, um, you've had a series of missteps. And also you could see that the leadership of the party was not configured, you know, to work with the kind of person that we have as president. You know, it's coming with huge capacity. And then you need a party that can, you know, will that, you know, for him, so that he can, he can deliver on his mandate. What um, were some of the missteps? Yeah, the, you mentioned one. Um, the chairman of the party is supposed not to be partitioned within the party. You know, you, you don't have people that are seeking for the ticket, and you clearly come out to say, I'm supporting this one. I recall um, September, I think last week of September, uh, that was the week the INEC timetable um, permitted campaign to commence. And then um, there was a letter that was in circulation, though unsigned, but from him, purportedly from him, it has not been denied up to now, um, saying that um, the, um, the presidential candidate was not consulting with the party. If such thing happened, what you expect a chairman to do, you have access to the presidential candidate. You see that nobody would know anything like that happened. You iron it out, and then um, everything continued. But, the first thing we saw was in the public. And then um, you would also uh, recall that when the, even before the, the, the presidential primaries, and uh, when Asuaju was in Ogo State in Abiyokuta, and um, he, he made some statement um, um, regarding um, his Emilokon. position at Emilokon, when the, the Moloka um, slogan came out. And um, the, the, the chairman came out to, to say, um, things like he will be disciplined, exactly. you know. And he, he exactly. repeated that also when Asuwaju, also in Abiy Okuta, um, mentioned the fact that mobilizing the, the voters to say, yes, Narali design has brought hardship to everybody, 
and fuel scarcity has brought hardship to everybody. But even with this, please plan and ensure on the day of election, if you need to trek, trek and deliver, and we are going to win this election. And the party chairman came out and said he will be disciplined. And um, you see, how was there before? Party takes the bullet for government because it, it, at the end of the day, that is the structure from where everybody you know, comes out. And we, you needed to have a leadership of the National Assembly in place immediately after the election and the, the inauguration of the new government. Uh, all the party needs to do was to sit down with the president and take direction. How you deliver that to ensure that the majority we have in the National Assembly mm. is to our advantage and we produce the kind of leadership. Because you have to look at the, the, the global picture. You have a president, you know the capacity this president is bringing, a man with such critical strategic thinking skills. So you need also to have the leadership of the National Assembly with that level of capacity. You need that also for the party so that everything can work together to um, bail out this country from whatever we have. But you saw the, 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 the way the leadership of the party vacated you know, the space and exposing the president to, to, to having to appear to, to, to be participating mm. in that. That shouldn't have happened. Okay. Mm. And so. now when even the leadership came on board yeah. and they elected or had in place the, uh, the other members of the Principal leadership. Officers, yeah. And then the, 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 the only avenue the chairman had to express his misgiving was public avenue to say whatever they did was in vain. Uh, that shouldn't mm. happen. And, okay. and I guess that's what he was referring but to. Um, if, if I could ask you, Ismail, I mean, we've heard and read the former chairman say concerning that announcement, look, he had the direction or the word of the president to do what he did. And he's not a foolish man to have just woke up one day and just go and do that. So that's what he claimed at the point. And then um, about when he said the current president will be disciplined during the time of campaign, now, could it be, because the way party works, I mean, you lot can speak about that, you're in the party. Could it be that he wasn't speaking alone? He wasn't speaking just about what he only thinks, that there might be several other people who think the same way. And if he made those statements at the time and about the president being disciplined or will be disciplined, if it was not right, why didn't the then president at the time counter him and say, nope, I'm the little party, you are in the wrong at this time? I think, the, first of all, I cannot speak for, you know, the former president and on why certain things were done or not done. But I do know for a fact that the president released a statement. The former president released a statement afterwards to say that he has no candidate. I think that was absolutely open. He said he had not picked any candidate and, uh, and that he had not supported any candidate or endorsed any candidate, you know, uh, as against what the national chairman has at that time said. But that's not even the issue. The issue is, let's even assume without conceding. I'm not conceding the fact that the president told him that this is my, my candidate. But let's even assume that that is the case. That the president called him in and said, you know, this is my candidate. And I want Chamberlain to be nominated. I have endorsed Chamberlain. If the president tells you that in confidence, as a political operative, as a national chairman of the party, the way you go about it, that's where the tact and the experience and the knowledge of politics comes in. You don't gather people and say, this is the candidate as if you are in primary school and you are a class monitor or a head boy. You don't do that in an elite organization. And that is why I mentioned the issue of an elite organization. Party chairmen, both at national and state level, need to understand what they are dealing with. That a political party is not where they are coming. Most of them are former governors. And they come, they think it's a command and control structure. They sit down, and everybody is their cabinet member. They have appointed them. No. NWC members and NEC members were elected just like you were, with the same number of delegates that probably you were elected. Some of them probably got more votes than you did. Everybody representing a certain constituency. They were elected. They were not appointed by you. You don't run it the way you like. That's not how you do political parties. And people in the executive and national assembly were elected by the constituencies. Yes, they may have run the flag of the party, but the party is not owned by you. You don't, you don't run the party. And even... The way, you know, the, even the constitution of the party, the way it gives so much powers to chairman. Chairman does this, 
is at the behest of the chairman. He assigns this to this. He assigns. We need to understand that a political party, like I said, is an elite organization. It needs to be dealt with and governed, not ruled, governed in a particular way. You know, so if the, even if, even if the president had told the national chairman, this is what I want, the national chairman, it is incumbent upon the national chairman to make sure that he finds ways, you know, first of all, to advise the president, you know, on what is best for the party okay. in, under the prevailing circumstances. And right. if that fails, he needs to know how to go about it. Not to come on TV and say, this did, is what did, we have endorsed, and we're going to discipline the other did person. Did the former president counter him when he said the uh, president, uh, I mean, President Tunubu now, will be disciplined at the time? I don't know about that, you know, because the probably, I don't know whether the president has counted, has, has, uh, counted him maybe privately. Maybe he is not willing to go to the, to, 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 to the public and do that immediately. I don't know what has happened after that. But I know that that statement of the national chairman, as at that time, was a mistake. You, you said something just before we go to Lagos. You said something, uh, uh, Ismail, about after the convention of the party, uh, that which produced the leadership of the party at the time, and as the leadership of uh, uh, Alaja Damu, that you, you didn't recognize the leadership of the party. How do you think that, that leadership could have come about? about uh, this question is for you, Mr. Larry. <laughs> <Is our> leader. <laughs> yeah. That is, if you do agree with Ismail that the leadership of the party at the time when it emerged mm. was quite strange. Do you agree with that? Well, I wouldn't use the word strange, and I'm sure he didn't use that word strange. No. Um, you see, just as he said, you, you need to emphasize the kind just of... Just a moment. He mm. said he didn't recognize. And this is I said a lot of members did, did not, not recognize these people eight years ago, and they, because they were not our party members. And it's not that, it's that's, true. That's, it's yeah, public knowledge. Correct. So uh, if I if he didn't use the word strange, I'm mm. just trying to use a synonym to if you don't recognize <laughs> something, it yeah. means it's strange, right? Yeah, well, uh, well <laughs> in that case, what uh, I think what he's saying is, you know, this party started 2013, and there that, is a history to it. Exactly. And when you just come on board some three years, four, five years ago, you may not understand, you know, some of the, exactly. the, the issues, you know, that we need to protect as far as the party is concerned. So that strangeness may have come from that, exactly. uh, that can these people really, you know, continue what we started in the way mm -hmm. that we emphasized. So I all think right. that's, that's what that um, was all about. Um, all right, let's go to Lagos. Thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, let, me, let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Ahmed. Um, I mean, you've spoken a number of, uh, about a number of things, and one thing that you said actually caught my interest, which is uh, when you made a reference to the states, uh, you know, that they were elected the same way the national chairman uh, was elected at, at, the, at that level. And, you know, there are also pundits saying that the former national chairman of your party, uh, who inherited uh, a lot of crisis, deep internal crisis across all states of the, of the federation, couldn't resolve uh, the, the issues in the states. And that is one of the things that, that gave him a number of troubles. There are those who would point to the conduct of congresses at world, local and state levels in a number of states all across the nation. How significant is that in, to the build up to the resignation that we are discussing? Well, uh, I want to be very clear about something. I have not seen the resignation letter, letter of, the, uh, of, the national, of the former national chairman, and so I don't know what is contained on why he resigned from his own perspective. Uh, but I do know that some of the allegations that went out uh, you know, clearly stipulated some of these issues that you raised that, uh, uh, because prior to him becoming the national chairman, you know, uh, during the caretaker committee, he was made, he was appointed as a, uh, as the chairman of the reconciliation committee that was set up by the, uh, by the caretaker committee. And he went around the country, uh, you know, to especially the trouble spots where we had, uh, uh, problems in the state. So I think him being the national chairman was supposed to be a continuation of that effort, um, you know, uh, to see how those things were resolved. Uh, no one is expecting him to have a magic wand uh, for the, oh, the current NWC to have a magic wand to clear all the problems in the states. Those, some of these things are deeply complicated and interwoven. Uh, it's not something that you can do in one fell swoop or in even a, 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 you know, a, a lifespan of a, of a particular 
uh, NWC administration. But I think that a lot of people were also miffed uh, with the way that, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the leadership of the party did not take so many of these things, uh, you know, uh, very seriously and bring down uh, their experience and the, the authority that they have to be able to solve some, even some of the, uh, the few solvable problems that people thought were solvable problems. In some cases, a lot of people even thought that uh, they created some problems in, in certain states. Uh, so I don't know if it contributed uh, to his resignation, uh, but I do know it's one of the so many things that a lot of people have uh, with this issue. But let me be very clear about something. Um, there will be no leadership of the party that everybody in the party will be happy with. There probably will never be that. There will be no utopian leadership that everybody will be happy with. Uh, but I think there will be a certain level, if you have a, a chairman that has tact and, and the humility and the honesty, most importantly, the understanding of the principle of the party and the progressive mantra uh, and the discipline uh, to work it through, then you may be able to find some certain level uh, of, um, of leadership that a lot of, that will be acceptable and uh, would be, con, you know, will be uh, commended by a lot of people. But certainly there will never be a time when uh, everyone who is in the party, both the leaders and the led, would be happy with uh, a particular style of leadership because it's a contest. A political party is a room of a lot of contest. So for whichever decision one takes, uh, the person who does not get the decision in his or her favor will probably interpret it in a particular way. So there would be people who would be unhappy. Uh, but like I said, ultimately, uh, these resignations were voluntary as far as we we're concerned. Uh, I don't know what Chamberlain is saying, whether or not somebody was pushed. I'm not aware of that. All I know is that these things are, uh, are voluntary and we are happy about it. Now it's an opportunity, but our joy would be complete if we actually utilize this opportunity to actually reform the party and make it focused. And like Mr. Larry said, the party, it's supposed to be the political engine room of the government in power. Uh, and then so that the government now can focus on governance and then the political party can do with party. But the political party has to be an institution, yes. not just a vehicle for running for elections. Mm. But how, how significantly that will play would probably uh, depend again, and quite strongly too, on how significantly the party plays at the state's level. So let me ask you, uh, Mr. Uh, Isaunilu, uh, given the crisis that's been reported all across almost all the states, um, APC, uh, in, in almost every state in, in the country, uh, one wonders then if the crisis is as widespread all over the nation, such that somebody will come from the National Secretariat and say, okay, we are the ones that are supposed to, to do this, and then another person will come and say, no, it's the states that's supposed to do it. I think it was in, was it uh, uh, River State or one of the states that we had such a significant challenge that they, they wreck, you know, had issues, you know, dealing with and all of that. So if the crisis in a political party such as the APC is so widespread across the states, can we then say that there is no interest in the national secretariat beyond the party chairman himself that could have staved all of these or even made it worse for whoever is the chairman of your party? Uh, well, um, let me first um, you know, clarify that um, the word crisis. I, I've, immediately you mentioned that I tried, I, I come around the country to see where exactly there is crisis. I know of conflict. Uh, in politics, just as uh, Ismail said, political party is about conflict and conflict resolution. It's about people trying to establish their interest above the interest of another group. And that contestation is what makes a political party. And that's what politics is all about. So nothing that I can see in any state has graduated to crisis from conflict. We need to establish the difference. And, and conflict is positive for party. That means you are having a lot of debate, you are having a lot of agenda, and you are having a lot of contestation. And at the end of the day, you have the mechanism to resolve peacefully and um, get the best result. So, me, uh, not Sanilu. crisis per se, but I, I would also um, agree me? with you. If you, if, I mean, 
without taking away anything from what you just said now, if uh, the parties are, in the, are for certain in specific interests of national consequence, and uh, you say that the, the contest have to go on and all of that, and they degenerate to the point that there is no consensus between the federal uh, level of the, of the party, the national level of the party, and the state level of the party, is that just a contest or it is a crisis? Because one would expect that at least the, the leadership that, will be taken. It's also, show, it's also show the need for leadership. Are you still talking? Go ahead, please. Can I go ahead now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, yeah, what, what that also shows is that there is an issue with the leadership. And if there was no such issue, there won't be need for this resignation. And the reform Ismail is calling for is actually um, the, 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 the need for that is so that we can have a party that is able to coordinate all the structures down to the world level in a way that we are truly representing what we stand out to do as progressive party. Our political worldview is progressive. And anywhere you have anything contrary to that, there will be issue. And you may have conflict graduating to crisis. And to avert that is the action that has been taken now. So uh, we all are hoping that we will do the right thing to ensure that we bring in the right kind of leadership to ensure that all the structures from zone to state to local government to what are uh, well taken care of and mobilize, you know, um, to, to focus on what is most important to Nigerians. And that is how to deliver the renewed hope uh, uh, agenda, a uh, mandate of uh, the president, uh, you know. Mr. Onilu, it would seem like um, that crisis is not alien to the All Progressives Congress. Uh, everywhere you turn in uh, party politics in Nigeria, you know, for other political parties as well, you find one form of um, state leadership crisis or the other, you know, either it's PDP or the Labour Party. Uh, so for the All Progressives Congress, I'm wondering what's... Um, alarming in this case, particularly when you consider that the national chairman of the party worked vigorously with the current president, uh, you know, across states of the federation, campaigning for him, and uh, which, you know, we all saw the outcome in the victory of the party. So it would seem as if, uh, because he didn't support um, the candidacy of the current president, that his fate was sealed. And when you consider, you know, the events after the victory of the president, you know, his absence at the class of 99 um, governors who visited the president, you would consider that his fate was sealed. I, I, I think I, um, I prefer Mr. Ahmed to answer this one. So um, was his capital offense just not supporting, um, you know, the current president's, uh, you know, uh, candidacy at the primary level? Mr. Ahmed, this is for you. Oh, okay. So <laughs> thank you. I think, um, I think I've answered that, um, you know, uh, earlier by saying that I, I don't know, it could be so many reasons, but I have, I've given a couple of few of them. Um, and, and it's not an offense, so to speak. This man has resigned voluntarily. Uh, he was not sacked, as far as we're concerned. We are here just alluding to why we thought that he uh, probably could have been told, could have been persuaded by his colleagues in NWC uh, to resign. I don't know why he resigned. I haven't seen the letter of his resignation. Uh, but I'm speaking from my own point of view. And now my point of view is the fact that I, you know, have, he should have resigned earlier than this. Uh, not only because of his stance, uh, probably, say, uh, pre-primaries or during primaries, uh, but because leadership, leadership, I want us to understand the concept of leadership. And I... And I keep saying this, and I'll keep repeating it, of a political party as a very unique elite organization. And why it is very important that the leadership of the political party, you know, deploys a lot of skill sets to be able to be successful, you know. We have been lucky in APC that we've had uh, two successive presidents that were elected one based on raw popularity, Muhammad Buhari in 2015, widely popular. The other because he's popular 
And because he has invested in the democratic space for quite a long time, and in people like myself, uh, Mr. Onilu, and so many other people who truly we proudly call ourselves the president, uh, President Ashwa Jibola Metinibu's protégés, because he has invested. So we have won largely because of our presidential candidates, you know, not necessarily because of the leadership of the party have done any wonderful things or have been able to systematically navigate the murky ways of politics. But now we need to now bring back the party right. to be able to stand on its own and win elections once we field candidates uh, who are capable of winning election. The most important thing is the institution of the political party itself and how it's able to navigate through issues. All right, gentlemen, we have to thank both of you for coming on. Uh, Lanre Isao Nilu, former Deputy Director of Communication Strategy for the APC, is also former National Publicity Secretary, as well as Ismail Ahmed, former National Youth Leader and a member of the BOT. I think one thing they might remember is you said a couple of times, political party is a unique elite organization. It is. So, uh, <laughs> food for thought <laughs> is your wondering. So, thank you both for coming on this morning and all the best. Thank you. So, we will be back in a moment. Stay on with us.